So here we are with our new tutorial series for Game Maker Studio and this time we're going to learn to make a game called Lazarus. Our learning goal for this tutorial series is at level 3 here to create a game in which instances change in response to objects around them. Now to do that we need to, on top of the skills we've already learned, we also need to, you need to learn about the step event, you need to learn about the if any object at action, the choose action, if instance exists action, exit game action, and set global variable action. You also need to understand the concept of sprite size and origin, interlaping, room size, grid size, solid objects, and flag variables. Our scenario for this game is that Lazarus has been abducted by the blob mob, who are intent on bringing this harmless creature to a sticky end. They've imprisoned him in the blob father's factory, where they are trying to squish him under a pile of heavy boxes. However, they're not accounted for Lazarus' quick thinking, as the boxes can be used to build a stairway up to the power button that halts the machinery. Do you have the reactions needed to help Lazarus build a way up, or will the evil, blob, evil mob claim one more innocent victim? So a bit more detail about the game. Each level traps Lazarus in a pit of boxes stacked up on either side of the screen, contain him within the level. Now, the arrow keys will move Lazarus left and right, and he will automatically jump onto boxes that are on his, in his way. However, he can only jump the height of a single box, and stacks of two or more boxes high will block his path. New boxes will periodically appear directly above Lazarus' current position, and fall vertically down from the top of the screen until they come to rest. This means that the player will be able to use Lazarus' position to control the boxes fall, and build a stairway up to the power button. Now there'll be four different types of boxes, increasing in weight and strength, cardboard, wood, metal, and stone. Now falling boxes will come to rest and rest on boxes that are stronger than them, but they will crush boxes that are lighter than them. Um, so the type of each box is chosen at random, but the next box will be shown in the bottom left-hand corner of the window just before it appears. There'll be a number of increasingly difficult levels with higher stairways to build and boxes that fall faster. When Lazarus gets squished, the level will restart to give the player another try. So from that scenario we can develop the following specifications. We have the object Lazarus who um, is squashed by boxes and he moves left and right and he can jump two boxes high. We then have the boxes objects. Um, they appear above Lazarus position. They fall vertically. There's four types which is cardboard, wood, metal and stone. Cardboard's the lightest, stone is the heaviest. Now a box rests on boxes that are heavier than them and they crush boxes that are lighter than them. The boxes are chosen at, chosen at random and the next box is displayed in the bottom left hand corner. There is a power button which stops the boxes and finishes the levels. Levels, each level is a pit of boxes, they increase in difficulty and they increase in box speed. The aesthetics, we're going to have a background image and music, we're going to have feedback sounds, we're going to have a splash screen. And we of course want this to play without error. Well, let's meet Lazarus. So before we actually launch into Game Maker and start creating this, we need to understand a little bit about the sprites in this game. Um, because they're a little bit different to the sprites we've been using. So our sprites of all we've been using have all been the same size um, for a given object. So the spaceship in Galactic Mail was the same size and the, the dragon mother was the same size respective now this one is a little bit different and it's got an animated sprite which moves around so I'll just show you what I mean by that so these are all the sprites for when Lazarus jumps to the right so you can see that would it will animate through those actual sprites so you can see that we start we start in the little corner and we move across to the right there and is the same for the jumping to the left. You can see that he fills up a certain amount of space and that the sprite's going to start somewhere and it's going to move across into that left hand space. When Lazarus moves to the right and up, so it jumps up on top of another box, this is the animation path that you'll see. All these sprites will be used and will cycle through. And same again for the left. When he moves up and left, this is what you're going to see. So you can see from one given point that Lazarus sprites will actually cover quite a large area outside the, just the box that Lazarus is in. Let's see if we can draw boxes around those so you can see what I mean. 
So Lazarus himself is just playing 40 by 40 pixels. This is him just standing still. And both of the Lazarus to the right, moving to the right, jumping to the right, take up an 80 by 80 pixel, um, which you can see here. And the jump into the left is again an, an 80 by 80 pixel. So if we put all those together, you can see these are all the pixel areas that Lazarus actually um, cover in the game. Now we need to find a common point um, for all of those pixels to reference for when we're um, having our Lazarus moves around. So there's two possible ones and I'm going to choose that one. Um, we could, you could possibly use this one over here, but because this is our normal zero zero pixel for the initial um, Lazarus. That's the one we're going to use. So when we start our load our Lazarus pixel, he's going to be zero zero. No hassle. That's just nothing new. That's exactly how we've done it before. But when we load the right jumping Lazarus, we need to allow for the fact that we actually have a, a 40 pixel offset for the Y to get down to the zero. So we need to keep that value in mind here, the plus 40 pixels to Y. And it's the same story for the moving right and up as well too. So we got the offset of 40, um, because zero is still fine, he's not moving, the X value is not changing, it's just the Y value needs to change to add 40 to that. So to get to our common origin point for the left jumps, we need to add both 40 to Y and to X. Um, so the X moves it up to this point here and the Y brings it to this point, which bring it again to our origin point. And this is the exact same story as well for the moving up and left. It's a offset of 40 pixels to both the X and the Y. So I'm sure at the moment you might be sitting there going, okay, and so, but um, a lot of this will make more sense when we get into um, Game Maker and start putting our pixels in there. And you'll understand when we're putting our 40 um, values of offset, 40 pixel offsets in on both the X and Y, where those calculations are coming from. So this tutorial, this little video has just been basically about learning about the idea of size sprite and how that impacts upon where you use your origin.